Ten seconds. Radiant's turn to back. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's your boy Latre, and we're back for 2018. And this is the game between Ferocious Gaming and Valhalla 2.0 Team. V. And uh, joining me tonight is Two Feet Two Boots. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. How are you doing, dude? Oh, ah, yeah, perfect pronunciation. I'm doing very well, Latre. Thanks for having me here on cast. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. How was your holidays, though? Ah, the holidays were pretty good. Spent most of it with family, you know, just enjoying some good time with them and relaxing, really. How are yours? It was pretty cool. Pretty much absolutely nothing. So, um, very well and rested for this game between Ferocious 5 Gaming and Valhalla 2.0 Team Veneer. Just looking at the quick bands, though, I see that they have taken out the, the Undying as well as the uh, Rasta. And also that little thunder buddy over there, the Razor, also known as Gillette. Seconds. And on the opposing team, they've taken out the Doom, the Night Stalker, and the Marana. Five on the side of Ferocious 5 Gaming, do you think they're trying to take out as much push potential as they possibly can? I think they're definitely trying to limit potential, but what strikes me as well is all three of those are heroes that do very well in the early mid-game aggressive phase and in teamfight environments. They all contribute some sort of AoE. So I think Ferocious 5 are showing a bit of their hand here in that they maybe want to be able to take this game late or at least survive the early game. I definitely agree with you there. On the side of uh, Team Veneer, uh, looking at the Doom and the Night Stalker being taken out, that is uh, quite a bit of Disable being taken out there, as well as the Morana, and that is definitely for that inverse and that potent, potent arrow. But I do see that Ferocious 5 has picked up the Lion, and uh, Veneer have come back with the Vengeful Spirit, and now they've pick and, uh, take, uh, ooh, bah, 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 picked up the Ancient Apparition. So that's definitely going to help cold feet um, and then the stun and that will just um, lock them in place and that will hopefully secure the kill for the carry so we're potentially looking at a, a tri-lane here I agree with you that definitely looks like aggressive tri-lane material down there it's something that ferocious five are going to have to actually consider the lion pickup is a nice good stable support in the beginning but now they need to start paying attention to this maybe a bit of counter picking or counter banning is going to start coming out from them in these next two three phases that is a possibility, but I mean, with the Lion Finger of Death, uh, especially with the, the Agnum Scepter upgrade, it does make him a huge threat for the side of Veneer. What do you possibly think they could go for to try and counter the Lion? I think the best thing to counter the Lion at this point would just be to try and kill him until he reaches the Ag's point, the good old-fashioned gank him and you're fine advice. In terms of items, uh, uh, sorry, in terms of heroes, maybe something like a Spirit Breaker. Oh, <laughs> Ferocious 5, pick up the Spirit Breaker. So in lieu of that, I'd go with a, maybe a Roaming Tuscar or yeah. throw him in your offlane, even a Clockwork. Just get at that line before he can even get the finger off. What do you think of the Spirit Breaker pickup? Ooh, that Spirit Breaker is uh, pretty potent, uh, especially within within this patch. He does a hell of a lot of damage, and uh, with that charge, they've always got vision on whoever they're trying to chase down. If the, the, the player does decide to pick up a Shadow Blade or a Glimmer Cape, uh, you'll still be able to find them, and he will definitely need to carry some dust on him, though. He definitely will need it, and what it has me in mind of now is, are we going to see the Lifestealer bomb coming out from Ferocious 5 Gaming? Ooh, that, that is a, a very big question, but I mean, Team, team Veneer can, can try and counter that by picking up the Lifestealer themselves. But do notice that now the Void and the Jow Ranger has been taken out. Uh, do you think there's a possibility that they might want to maybe pick up a Witch Doctor? Um, and obviously get rid of the Void to cancel it? I think that that is definitely a uh, potential here, but more than anything, I think Ferocious 5 are really worried about the team fight that's going to come out of Veneer. In that all of Veneer's heroes, just like uh, the first few bands, they all work very well in team situations. Yeah, I see that the, the Brewmaster now being picked up. Uh, I have seen Jolts um, actually playing that. Uh, what I'd like to do is I have introduced a new feature within the cast, and I'm just going to display the team profile for the side of uh, Team Veneer and just to give you guys a heads up of what they look like so we do have Aisha Snowy Fakir playing on the hard carry uh, then we have Jolts, uh, Chanel Barnard we have Samantha Moxie Dianuk on the solo mid 
Jessica Fluffy Duck Perry on the roaming support, Katrina, uh, Caitlin Katrina Ramsey on hard support, Gun Raider is the substitute for the team, and then the team manager, which is Kyra Tiger Lily. So that is just an idea of what the players look like. I have tried getting it for the side of Ferocious 5. Um, they have stated they've only been together a short while, but they will get that information to me, and hopefully I'll be able to play that with the next game that they play. Also, any other teams that are watching the stream, please feel free to send me an email. It's xgrintex at gmail.com. Please send the uh, picture of the player, the name, the gamer tag, and the position being played. Um, Underlord and Invoker. So that's definitely an Invoker mid. That, it has to be an invoker mid, and it's the Underlord that surprises me. I see very little of him, and what I do see of him doesn't really work out well. That LT timing seeming to always be a second too early or a second too late. I mean, with, with the Underlord, I mean, Vengeful Spirit is, is pretty much a very, very good counter for the Underlord, especially with the swap. If any of those players are caught within uh, the, the rift, they can be swapped and they will not be teleported back to base. So, with very, very quick thinking from the Vengeful Spirit, they will be able to single out any of the players and that could be to the detriment of Ferocious 5. That is actually a very good point that you've just mentioned. I hadn't considered the potential of Vengeful Spirit against the Underlord. But seeing as they picked Underlord into that spirit, you got to wonder, are Ferocious Five aware of that and are they not concerned about it? Um, look, I've, I've seen it in, in very, very few games um, that it's actually happened, someone being swapped out. Um, also with the, the Kunkka. I mean, Kunkka can cancel it also with X marks the spot. So there are counters for, for that rift and it is definitely going to cause some issues. The only thing is, does Team Veneer know that they can actually do that? It will be very interesting to see and I do hope that we actually have a play like that and I think that will cause utter chaos for us at casting, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I can see that causing utter chaos and I join you in hoping against hope and crossing my fingers that whoever picks up this vengeful spirit does actually take it into that role and realizes, hey, I can swap and this is a free kill. No, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's gonna throw a spanner in the works. It's gonna be one kill, but it's definitely gonna work against them. And every time that they might actually do that, they will possibly consider keep on doing it. And it might even give them the upper hand. I do like the, the Lunar pickup that they have though. He, he's got the, the mini stuns available as, as well as that uh, ever potent ulti. Also with the Agnum Scepter upgrade, now goes to an AOE effect and the Slark. Ooh, <laughs> and a quick, quick counter pick there with the Viper. <laughs> Didn't waste any time with that one. Not at all. Oh, that is the slot is such an interesting pickup. I think it rounds out their lineup well. There, they've got enough stun. They can hold people in place forever. Now the slot being that hero that's just gonna go and get that damage, get those kills up, and start racking up those essence shift auras. To be a very very interesting game. So for all those joining us on live stream, thank you very very much, and I do hope that you enjoy the game. Ferocious Five Gaming versus Valhalla 2.0 Team Veneer. And this one is going to be a very, very important match. It's the first of the best of three. And I do hope that uh, you guys enjoy. Right, and uh, seems that we are straight up into the action. Just going to introduce uh, the side for Ferocious battle. 5. On Lucius, we do have the Invoker. On Lion, we've got Eternal Penguin. Underlord will be played by the Sorrow. Spirit Breaker by BN5000. Finally, Slark will be played by VQN. And on the side of Team Veneer, we have Moxie playing the Viper, Fluffy Duck on the Ancient Apparition, Jolts on the Brewmaster, Katrina on that Vengeful, and Snowy on the Luna. Oh, it's going to be an interesting match. Do you think we're going to see early game uh, rune steals here? I think both teams are queuing up for it, and they're very keen, but right now, I feel nobody knows what's going on and who's who in the zoo. There are no wards out for either team at the moment, so I think they're going to rather play it safe, eh? Yeah, just that uh, Spirit Breaker hasn't skipped 
kill anything as yet. Uh, he does have a sentry ward available, so that could potentially be for a D ward in the mid lane. And the has got to the exhaust, so he's going to want to go for the sun strike early up, and uh, we might even see some uh, big uh, accurate uh, sun strike kill. I would love to see some accurate Sunstrike kills, but what interests me is the Invoke only has the one pool Tango, so that's a lot of confidence or maybe a little bit of a miscommunication between the two teams. And we do see the Bounty Runes going even split 2-2. Two -two. Uh, see on uh, the, the Lion, he currently does have uh, the Observer Ward, which has been placed um, in this position here, so they do have a bit of vision. And looking at the mid lane, that will be contested by BN5000 and the Invoker against Moxie uh, on the Viper. At the bot lane, we've got a big one. Uh, he's going to go up against Jolt and Fluffy Duck, and he will be killed by VQN. And Jolt is definitely going to be spamming that Junk and Haze. Um, it's just going to ensure that um, a lot of last hitting actually um, gets missed. Have another. I insist. On the top lane, we have the Sorrow. He's uh, going up against Snowy and Katrina. But we have the Spirit Breaker still moving around. He's got that uh, Sentry Ward in the mid lane. And um, he's just going to try and charge up or initiate wherever he actually needs to go. Um, what do you think about the um, position of the lane? Um, I think right now the lanes are in a pretty interesting state. We spoke about the possibility of a tri -lane, of an aggressive tri-lane out for Team Veneer, and they've instead gone with a safe 2-1-2 two -two strategy, which is quite interesting. The Ancient Apparition just works so well in a nice aggressive position, but I think that the mid lane definitely favors Mark, and that the top lane should probably be about even. I don't think they can kill this Underlord, at least not without a heavy rotation. Now, the, the one thing that works in the, the favor of uh, the Underlord is that Atrophy Aura. I mean, he skilled that with the Firestorm, so with every kill that he gets, he does uh, get quite stronger. Currently at 30 bonus damage, but uh, Fluffy Duck now actually popping down a ward just to see if uh, Lion is actually going to pick up any sort of bounty. He has been chased away though, and um, they each get their own ruins in respect. It is a, a very interesting ward. I myself quite like it. It gives a little bit of vision of the ward spot and if anyone's going to come try for a gank through the jungle. So, good strategic ward. Keeps you offlaner safe. But I noticed they haven't dewarded the, the lion here at all bot, which tells me they have no idea that it's here. So, maybe the spirit breaker is going to set up a play bottom. Right, we, we might have a play at uh, the top lane. Katrina is moving in and uh, they are wanting to go on to the Underlord. Underlord, ha ooh, it's, no, I thought there was going to be a stun, but no, it didn't come out. Uh, I think she was just there for a little bit of a rain, lane harass, get some denies out. She's just gotten some sentries now. So I think just looking to use the vision to regain control of this lane. Yeah, I do see that. Look, Underlord doesn't really have any ward here, so he could potentially be ganked uh, quite easily. But Katrina now pulling the wave, um, and uh, the Sorrow can still easily deal with that. He does have the Firestorm. Um, he's just going to pull them back closer to the tower, and he's just going to use that to farm up those creeps and get that additional gold. I must say, I'm not, I'm not too sure what the idea idea here was with pulling the wave. I mean, as you say, he's easily farming that up. He's got two points in the Firestorm and a, a point in the Atrophy Aura, and just taken put him Malice. So, uh, he's really happy Ooh, with that. Ooh, just look at this. Oh, look at that. Moxie is getting very low. Sunstrike lands with the Cold Snap has worn off. Only two tangos, though. She should be okay, and... Lucius is doing very well in this lane. 14 for 15 for 13 on the last hits. Right, I just want to uh, point something out that I did notice here. This Sentry Ward placed bottom literally just just misses this ward over here and they cannot deward it. Very, very good placement there by them. And um, yeah, that ward is uh, going to stay up. Oh, that. It couldn't get any closer. It really couldn't. You gotta feel sorry for the lion right there. Ooh, the That's... sorrow might find himself in a difficult position. Firestorm Snowy. coming out. Nice little stun coming out there from Kachina. Snowy! Snowy. Ooh! Low, very fire saving her. She's gonna pop a loosened beam there. And sorrow backing out. Just too tanky. This <laughs> <game>. <laughs> 
<laughs> Lucius with the Sunstrike first blood on Snow. Yeah, Very just a... <laughs> good read and play from him. Ooh, uh, charge over, coming in. BN is charging up on Moxie in the mid. And no Cold Snap coming out, though. No mana for it. And Moxie's going to be okay. Is about to take the yeah, at the bottom lane, Vico N needs to scatter away. Just uh, using those uh, bounces and uh, trying to avoid as much damage as he possibly can. BN 5000, he's uh, still got the Tango's one GG branch and the healing salve. And just picking up a uh, bounty to just get that additional experience. Five minutes in the game and he's uh, only currently level two. Ooh, finding Katrina. Nice little stun and just moving away. It seems we've settled a bit back more into what our lanes were a couple of minutes ago after this action. I think once Eternal Penguin TP'd out, he realized QN just can't stay down here on his on his own he needs someone to hold his hand and just help him get through the standing phase till he hits level six yeah he's uh, definitely gonna have to to get there as, as soon as possible um underlord is uh, almost oh he's just reached level six so that dark rift is available oh firestorm as well oh, oh nice little stun massive bit of damage out on both of them and Snowy's only level 4, almost halfway through that. The Sora has been doing very well in this lane. 20 for 7, with Snowy on 18 for 3. Oh, that uh, Firestorm is doing quite a, a lot of harassment there, and that coupled with the Pit of Malice, um, just keeping them in position for, for a little bit longer. Just, yeah, making it almost impossible th for them to really harass him out of lane without taking a massive amount of damage. Now there's, um, even with the mini stun coming out from the Luna, there's no real damage um, that's actually being done to him. But now Katrina coming in, she's got the magic missile available, she is moving on to him. Firestorm coming out once again now. Ooh, stun coming out, is it going to be enough? No, and the no. is just going to shake it off. Yeah, he he's really not too worried at this point, that what, those one charge is really kind of in handy there. And he's got all came boots up again so he can actually go for this. Nah, he's gonna back off. Nah, that firestorm is just uh, doing way too much damage uh, to those creeps. Easily farming. He definitely seems to have control of this lane and he is keeping the vengeful as well as the Luna away. One thing that we do need to consider is that with the venge and the Luna, there is so much damage aura coming from these two, and that's definitely going to help the Viper as well as the Brewmaster uh, in the later stages of the game. That, uh, you are definitely right on that. The amount of damage amp that's going to come out from those two heroes is insane. Ooh, mid! You know, mid. Yep, charge and a gank down on mid. Charge into strike into sun strike and certain death. BN5000 goes down. To the Viper Strike, but still a very good kill and a very needed kill. No, oh, they definitely needed to to get that one. Current score: seven minutes, fifty seconds in the game is at two one. Uh, that is in the favor of Ferocious uh, Five Gaming. Oh, and Snowy is having a real hard time here at the top lane. Yeah, Snowy is just not enjoying life up here. She's not getting the levels of the farm that she needs. This Underlord's taken over, right? Now she needs to start of her catch-up game and how she's going to get back into it. No, look, the, the current uh, net was, is the Invoker in uh, first position and that's followed shortly by the Brewmaster. So, I mean, Jolt is not having uh, that bad of a game. Oh, she's definitely not having that bad of a game. And she's actually doing really well down here, managing to get level 6 already. Uh, Eternal Penguin just harassing her a little bit. But... The, the question now being, can Jolts carry this game until Snowy gets back online and until Moxie on this Viper starts doing serious damage? Yeah, look, the, the thing with the, the Brewmaster is that he's very versatile. I mean, he's got the Primal Split um, and he's got the, the Rock Toss, so he should be able to, to turn a gank in his favor um, if she's actually able to time it perfectly. Uh, you know, maybe wait for uh, take out of damage, you know, draw them in closer, get that Primal Split off. And uh, that could potentially work in a favor, and um, we might even see some good kills coming out there from Jolts. It would be very lovely to see, and I think it would do nice to switch a bit of the tempo in Team Veneer's favor. At the moment, they are staring at a, at a 
at the other team on a 1k lead, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but it is by far something you got to consider when you're looking at a snowball hero like Sno Slark. Yeah, Slark just uh, what those heroes. He's able to, to give you a hiding, especially with that Shadow Dance. You're not able to, to see him at all. Um, I mean, your sentries and your gem is, is absolutely useless. Um, so that definitely works in their favor there. Um, looking at the Sorrow, he's got the Chainmail as well as the Rope of Meiji. Uh, definitely looks like he's building into that blade mail. Yeah, that blade mail actually not too far away, around 900 gold for him. And Ooh, I this could be a kill. Trina's got the stun. Oh. Is it going to be enough? Ooh, nice Rose little stun, stun going there. Just not enough mana. Do they have the reach? No, they're they're giving up on it so close. Oh, mid. So far. Oh, mid is going up. They're going on Moxie again. Sun Strikers out. As the Earth Spike <laughs> dead again, but Lucius picking up his second kill in here as Jolt comes comes in, but she doesn't have a blink dagger. She's got enough for the clap, and that's oh, I think she's no, just too. I think she could have dove that if she committed the primal split. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. I was hoping to actually see that. Uh, once again with a nice little rock Fire toss that would have stunned up. Um, you know, Invoker doesn't have that much mana. He's got the cold snap as well as the sun strike. Um, but even with the split, if um, Invoker does land that uh, cold snap, uh, poor Jolt is not going to be able to, to get into that uh, primal split. That is also actually very true. So, uh, I think an offensive rather than a defensive primal split up against this Invoker. And he does already have the Hanuma. I just would the Aghanim's queued up. This this is an invoker that's going to be scary this game. I see that Sasaro has skilled up 18 Firestorm wave damage. So, oh, that Firestorm is going to be doing quite a bit of damage on that side. Ooh, we've got uh, going, Jolty. Oh, we've... The stun is good. The drunk is good. The ulti flies. And are they going to be able to get this kill? Yes, they do. Jolt manages to get that last hit. The crit from Drunken Brawler helping her out. That was a very, very nice one there. Um, Darkrift was available for, for Underlord, but um, never actually... Or could have potentially used it, and there might have been a chance that uh, he could have gotten away. I, I agree, but I think he realized the cooldown is just too long. They are definitely going to kill him. So what, you know, why put it on cooldown when you, you could use it? A little late, a little later. Maybe there's a plan in it for F and F FFG. It, it is a possibility. I mean, he can uh, get to the battle quicker, but I mean, he can get a TP scroll for that. But uh, Moxie has just picked up an uh, invisible rune. Yeah, and it looks like she wants to make her way down into the bot lane, and they Sorrow is hiding here behind the back lines. They are hugging the tower. Oh, they seem to know this, and it's Ob's Ward, yeah, right up there. That's just watching her do everything. Oh, that ward uh, definitely make sure that they move. To... Oh, we've got a Teep coming in from Broom And now we're going to see enough. Ooh, Dust! Dust! Dust. Rob Jolts is thinking ahead. Let's hope to see her dive this one. Well, oh, yes, here comes the Underlord. Now he's ready to party. And oh, what a... Brilliant counter from him. Unfortunately, Lucius does still go down. Primal oh. split still available. What? what br it is. It is. Ah, sorry, I forgot about that. Brilliant play from the Sorrow, though. No, I haven't seen Jolt's use Primal Split yet. I'm not sure what the reason for that is. Um, she possibly might not feel comfortable with, with using it at the moment. And maybe she wants to use it when, you know, she's in a bit of trouble and needs to get out of a sticky situation. I think she's also just waiting for that blink dagger to come. She's so close to it. And at this point, rather just two more creep waves, get that 100 gold, and then she's the ready. But that firestorm damage has just killed her. Oh, no. Did, did not expect that the sun strike was also right on her, so she was going to die to one of the two. So much damage and coming from them at the moment. It is a lot of damage, and so early in the game, Snowy needs more time. She needs more farm, and it looks like um, Eternal Penguin on the line is busy pinging her out. He's trying to say, "Let's make a play on there." I'll take that. But uh, there is quite a bit of vision uh, on the side of Ferocious Five going, but then again, at uh, the side. 
of uh, veneer they've, they've only got uh, isolated wards at the moment i mean they've got the top lane covered and um, they've also got a little bit of the bot boon oh tower's gonna go down and that was a false tower that's 14 minutes in this invoker has his point boost uh, and he's just in a dominant position now, and as we say that, he's getting gone on Sunstrike, secures the kill with a Nether Strike to make sure that she's held in place. Alright, it does seem that uh, they're gonna go for, for Tower Swap here. Um, if you're gonna take the top tower, we might as well take the bottom tower. And Snowy with one point in the Glaives, uh, not the fastest at this push, but with her with friends and teammates here to help her out there. Oh no, but as I said, Underlord deep being in, and he's bringing in friends. He brought in a lot of friends. Blade Mail finished up on him as well. Uh, uh, Sorrow is definitely not scared. He really wants to just get in there and do as much damage as he can. Ooh, Jolts! Just sneaky, sneaky! Oh, yeah. uh, I think the <laughs> charge from BN5000 was was off cooldown for that. But, oh, there, never mind. He's charging in towards Fluffy Duck, but backs out at the last second. Just chase her off. Uh, that cold feed could, could have caused a lot of problems for him. And he just decided to, to not go for it. A very, very good decision there. That tower really does do quite a bit of damage. Oh, but Mox is about to die, and Jolts has been very low. She's about to die as well. Ooh. Finger of death ensures it from Eternal Penguin. And they lose the tower, but pick up two kills. Oh, cat. This is just too healthy for that stun strike to do anything. You know, it seems that uh, both of the teams are wanting to start playing uh, a little bit more aggressive. Um, they're still getting the feel of, of each other, um, still deciding um, what they actually need to do. Um, I see that um, Luna or Snowy uh, has got one level of the Eclipse as well as the Lucent Beam, which is on max 4. We've got a Stalker here, the Slark. Ooh, Slark going straight into that Echo Saber. Not, not wasting time with the Shadow Blade at this point. He oh, uh, so I apologize. Shadow Blade just delivered to him, and that is that is now scary. He is at the point now where Vanilla have to they have to stick together. They got to start traveling in pairs. I'm trying to see if any of them have uh, any sort of detection at the moment. Uh, Jolt is the only one with um, dust on her, and this tower should fall quite easily. Yeah, Jolt just having that one charge the dust though, so they gotta be careful with that. It 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 has to hit the slock. There is no other option. I do feel that uh, to a certain extent, um, it, it's still a, a toss up between who's actually. Uh, got more domination in terms of um, the lane control. Um, it does feel that when it gets to a stage where uh, Ferocious Five are in the lead, uh, then the side of Veneer actually decide, okay, you're going to do this, then you know we'll do that to try and counter. Um, so they actually managed to save the top tower, but lost the bot in the process. And they're about, they're busy losing the top now. They're going to pop, pop fortification, but. It's really just a delaying tactic at this point. And Team FFG are just taking a commanding lead, and the Sorrow is now channeling his ulti again down into the mid lane. Oh, we've got a charge coming in. Oh, Primal Split, Primal Split. Go for a charge, primal yes. And we get it off. Yes. The last minute Primal's getting to work on BN5000. The Slarks was the opening up on Katrina. She's Ooh. gone for the count. Flappy Duck possibly next. No, she's oh. getting out of dodge. BN5000! Oh, surviving on such little health. Oh, Jolt's coming back in. Oh, Air Blast flies up. Should be the Sora dead, but that's a very dead Viper, and... Oh no, here comes the <laughs> channeling clip. down from the hilltop. Ish, oh, Spirit is charging in. That man's ready to fight. Snowy probably being the next one to fall. Earn charge on him. And let's see, can they get the damage out? They should be able to. Yes! Lucid nice. A triple <laughs> kill for Snowy and a brilliant fight for Veneer. That that was a very, very good team fight. I mean, the Eel Scepter 
Uh, I think that came from the Invoker, actually saved that additional damage from Spirit Breaker Charge. Um, so, you know, Snowy didn't take that much damage. Yeah, Snowy took practically zero damage, and because she had that an advantage up here, she could just let that ulti go, Slark is immediately dead, and there is nobody in position to back up on that, had it in the bag. Uh, to see Invoker does not have the Eul Scepter, um, just have a quick look at who actually had that. Um, um, it was maybe a tornado from him? I see he, yeah, he does have that invoked. Yeah, that was, uh, oh, quite long for, for the tornado though. Ooh! They're, they're, they're finding Snowy, they've found her, Sunstruck doesn't connect, but the Slark and, yeah, she is just dead, very, very dead. As the rest of her team go to the top and try push that wave out, look for another tower up there. I uh, see Jolt uh, currently has almost 2k gold. Not sure what she's shaving up for. But now we've got Underlord. He is going to rift in. He doesn't doesn't bring anyone with him. But um, the Spur Break has actually cancelled the charge. Uh, I think they were they were planning on saying, listen, if if they still go in, we go in. We fight and we take them. But maybe the Spirit Breaker missing one or two friends just put a hold to that. Although the Invoker does have the Aghanim Scepter already up, going towards the Boots Travel next. Mm, yeah, the, it, it's uh, possible what the, the Invoker has got the, the Boots of Travel lined up. It's going to take him a while to get there. He's only got 840 gold. And um, it does seem that Veneer is actually starting to take control of this matchup. Veneer are indeed moving themselves into a very good position after a, that team fight, and they're just farming up. Snowy's already finished up the Yasha and the Dragon Lance, going straight into that man just for that nice raw pushing power, and maybe being able to split out of a Cold Snap or out of a Hex. So it's going to be really interesting to see what she does with it when she picks that up. Uh, Jolty is uh, building into that uh, Black King bar. Uh, do you think um, that is a good item for, for her to pick up, or would you maybe consider her going for something else? I would like to go for something else, uh, like a Heaven's Help, to really give a final solution once and all to that slog. But there's also right now what's killing this t killing them in these fights is the Underlord, the Invoker, and the Lion. So I think it's just a bit of a survival choice there. Let's let's get a Black King bar, then nothing can stop me in my uh, ultimate. Yeah, the the ultimate to to a certain extent for me is you know her way of uh, escaping or uh, initiate. Um, you know the the BKB I don't really feel is is an item. Um, you know that she should be getting right now. Yes, it does help against the, the the magic damage and so on. But if she does decide to rather go for an assault Kiras, um, that could be an even better option as it does help the team at ball. You've got the aura from the eventual spirit coming through as well as that of the Luna, and that is a lot of damage coming through much quicker. This vengeful spirit's also putting prioritizing the wave of terror. Actually, She's at minus five armor now. So I agree with you. I think an assault Kiros would definitely have been better for the team fights, but maybe she's just really terrified of this magic damage. And as I said, that we get a smoke coming out from FFG down at the bot, and looks like they are running. Up. They want kills. Ooh, nice little smoke up coming there through from Batasaro has hey. been picked up. Ooh, Moxie, oh, Moxie, Moxie. Moxie. Oh, overlap. Wow, just look at that damage. That a very dead viper. Oro picking up another kill. Three, three for four, and four at this point. He's having a wonderful game right now. Uh, this is a very interesting matchup. Um, it does seem that uh, Furious 5, um, they are now starting to, to take control of the map. 24 minutes in the game. It's only 11, 11 kills to 9. Um, so the pace of the game is not that quick at the moment, um, but I do feel um, that when those late games fight break out, um, it's, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, I definitely agree with you. Those late game fights are going to be sheer chaos. And Snowy is doing her best. She's farming up very well on this loot. You know, she's up to almost three gold at the moment in her back pocket. And seems like the courier down at the shop showing she wants to buy something. 
but it seems to all come down to who's getting the jump on who and who's going aggressive first i uh, see that uh, the ultimate orb for uh, luna has actually been picked up and that's uh, working very very steadily towards that mantis style oh she's ju just up the rest the rest before the mantis it's in her stash right now but that obviously means she does not have buyback and she's very far away from getting that buyback it's uh um, yeah they definitely need to to save up for that gold i mean it's 820 gold away but we do have a charge now coming on to snowy and that's actually been cancelled oh I, w I wonder why the spirit breaker keeps cancelling his charges maybe they go into an area where they lose ward vision or snowy and they just they just don't want to risk it but you've got an underlord with you so worst case scenario you bring the whole team in um the one thing is that um I don't really feel that they, they they feel secure enough to actually charge especially um when one of them actually goes out of vision well, and we, um we said that, but the end right now for getting the charge out into the sun strike magic missile comes up but it's just not enough to delay him a little bit as the kill still happens oh, very 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 risky plays coming out here but uh, as i mentioned especially with uh, the the warding spots um when they lose vision of you know, the as a whole on the map itself uh, for example running around a tree and they don't see the other players uh, it might just be their way of saying you know what we don't know if they're there we can't really see them so you know let's just back away yeah i i definitely agree with you there i think i think after that last fight when veneer almost team wiped them they gained a bit of a healthy respect for the let's not charge all in strategy and and they're playing it a bit more safe now oh the but Underlord is just TPing friends down. He he's and Veneer do get the tower, but do they get out? Ooh. Brilliant man to dodge from Snowy, leaping from Fluffy Barn on the Ancient Apparition. Gonna take one for the team there. Gold to channel the TP and they get the now that's slow coming out from from Jolt T and um yeah that um Dark Pact is just going to remove the slow. Yeah, she was so wishing she could get the jump on that. The slog just way too quick, way too agile. And as you said, that dark pack just removing any chance that they had of that being a successful gank. Now, uh, Snowy has completed the, the Manta style, working away towards that BKB. Um, that's definitely going to help her quite a lot. Um, I mean, Luna now currently has taken first spot, but that's followed close to the Invoker and the slog. And uh, Bolts on the Brumoth has uh, dropped down considerably. Yeah, the, the farm is something that Veneer need to start worrying about, need to start paying attention to. There are some FFG that are high on this map to do something about that. Yeah, I do feel that um, the the side of Veneer really do need a lot more vision on the map. I mean, they've got quite a bit of uh, sentries out, but it's all in the wrong spots. Yeah, they've they have two wards now, one's at the top rune spot, it's about a timeout, and then another one here on the Radiant side top rune spot, and that's it, that's their whole, oh, and then, sorry, one more, more freshly planted down here, and that's, that's their whole game, it's something that they need to really work on, because no vision, no fights, wards win games. Ooh, screw break, in on, Mox. The Underlord getting a beautiful trap out, Chaos Meteor flying on just Sora, but Mox is already dead. And that's... Oh no, Snowy's coming in, cha channeling that ult, gets the Underlord, probably looking for the Spirit Breaker. No, well, found him, and manages to get the stun out, and it's gonna be a, a tower trade. Now that's um, how easily the, the team fight can actually change, but they don't have any creeps now, so that's how it's just regenerating. But uh, the creeps are now finally arriving, and just look at how quickly um, that tower is actually going to go down. Um, they do have the option of going for the stop tower, but he is there. He does have the cycle available. Oh, and he's picked up his blink dagger as well. But what really worries me about that fight is that the slock wasn't there. The most farm member of their team was on the other side of the map. And he's running back. He's joining them now. So this one is going to be a very interesting one to watch. 
Now the, the one thing that I have noticed um, a lot, especially if you if you play quite a lot of pub games, um, it's a 29 minute, 3 minute, 3 minute mark, you still have um, your main carries farming in the bushes, um, and that actually puts a lot of stress on the team, and um, you know the, the carry would rather um, sit with uh, farm in the bush than with kills for heroes. As we said, Snowy just went down to a Wombo combo from Team FFG and Jolt's looking to back out, but that Tornado's gonna catch. Uh, does stop the Sun, Jolt manages to get the BKB off and just try and run himself away. But uh, Fluffy Duck on the Ancient Apparition is not new for Null Trade. Well, oh, that uh, BKB definitely helped Jolt uh, quite a bit there to, to get away. Um, she's using the Shrine to, to heal up. Moxie is coming into play at teams. Yeah, Mo Mo Moxie wants to do some stuff. It's a uh, uh, force. The Hurricane pikes herself. Up. There's not that right now. They just need to play, play, keep them out of our base for another 30 seconds until Snowy is back. I have to say that um, the all girl team from uh, the side of Veneer is really not doing that badly. Um, you know, they, they, they're keeping up with, with the pace of, of the game at the moment. Uh, 16, 4, 11, 31 minutes in the game, almost 31. And um, definitely not doing too bad at all. Definitely not. They are playing very well. But it must be said, Lucius on this Invoker is playing a brilliant game right now. And and with the aggression that's coming out of the Sorrow, it's it's working in a perfect partnership. And they take Roche, Slark picks up the Aegis, and he's got a Basher as well. Yeah, this lock is uh, going to cause quite a lot of issues here for the side of Veneer. Um, you know, they're going to have to get that um, vision up quickly just to, to avoid um, the Slark running Shadow Blade, um, getting personal with, with those ladies. And that's what they need to do. Now is the time that they need to be on guard, get those Sentry Wards out, and um, start uh, sending their ground. What do you think the next item is that needs to come out from Snowy? She's just finished up the Black King bar. Go for next. Um, look, Snowy is working her way towards that uh, butterfly, but I mean, that's easily counted by an MKB. Um, so potentially she could start looking at, you know, maybe picking up that um, Satanic. I think the Satanic would definitely be a very good up for her. I mean, she's cresting over 200 uh, damage at the moment, if my math is right, somewhere around 240. So right now, she needs a way to stay alive in, in these matches. Maybe the Satanic, maybe even a Scotty if she can actually afford it. And just live long enough to deal this damage, because Moxie isn't. She's still so fragile and so underfarmed. Um, an another good item there. Ooh, fight oh, here at the shrine. Uh, Vengeful Spirit almost falling for the combo, but Slark get him the double kill there. Luna taking the 100 Lucent Beam damage, not something you see often on your Lunas. Yeah, it's quite quite a bit of damage uh, coming through there. Um, how, if you consider that um, if Luna does to, to pick up uh, the Agnum Scepter, uh, she's able to, to pop it in an AoE or potentially uh, pop it on a teammate or, you know, maybe an enemy, so wherever they're running, holding hands, it could split them up, and that could maybe be what they want. Speaking of splitting them up, Snowy seems to be going for the Rax trade-off, and she's going to be able to do it. Pops the Manta, these creeps are going down faster, and this tower is going down even faster. Down to about a fifth of its HP, that's a trade-off. So, oh no, and as I say, this Ooh. is Vanilla them off up top, BN5000 going back, Lucius has already TP'd in, but the damage is done, melee is oh -ho -ho! a fall and let it go, he let it go, the, she flies out with the ulti, it's so back, the creeps unfortunately, oh, the Slark is on the run, still doing a lot of work, oh wow, oh yes, Slark is, he definitely needs to run, that is a lot of damage that's coming out from that group, he manages to purge it off, oh but, ho -ho! Jolt's just a half second late on the thunderclap. And now Invoker with his own BKB as Eternal Penguin runs for his life. BN5000 actually managed to find Snowy up there. Oh, Lucius coming out with uh, the, the wall played. No GG call yet. But uh, these ladies are really bringing it to the table right now. They truly are. It's a seven kill difference. The... 
SMG are farming very well, but the team fight from the ladies is incredible. The ages has now been popped. Lucius though, deafening blast creating, and now Shadow Blade BQ and he's going to work. Right. Katrina managing to get the stun out, hoping to slow him down. Yes, they'll be, it looks like they'll be able to get out to safety. Oh, Katrina, 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 you need to run. And she does manage to get away. Loving that, living a bit close to the edge it's there, but gets away with it. That's a very, very nice backup there for the Viper. A uh, very good stun uh, coming out, and I think that was on the Underlord. And uh, just um, giving Viper that space to actually get away. Yeah, getting him that space was crucial. Slark picking up the extra pounce, pounce leash. I think he's also tired of people managing to slip away from him at the last second. Take bottom shrine. Uh, it's um, very, very, very interesting. Uh, the pace that uh, the game is switching now. I mean, um, once that split comes out from Dolce, it completely turns that fight around. There's a lot of damage coming through, especially with that little rock toss. And um, even the, the Spirit Breaker is, is not able to, to escape it that easily. He isn't at all. And as we said, Slark's now finished up the Silver Edge. So it's going to be interesting to see who he decides to actually put that on. But the team fight count, the counter initiation from Veneer is definitely quite potent. You've got the AA blast to come through, and then really, who do you focus on? The pandas, but three causing chaos, and he's busy raining down Lucent beams that do a hell of a lot of damage. Uh, it does seem now that uh, Jolchi is uh, busy building up to that uh, assault Kiras. And that's definitely going to help the team so, so much. It's so much armor uh, being added to the Brewmaster. It's, it's going to be absolutely ridiculous when Jolty starts getting out of hand. It truly is. And Snowy's actually farming up. She is about 2,000 gold away from that uh, butterfly. There was a charge down bot, but BN5000 decides to cancel it. Oh, we see a Rada Atos coming out from the Invoker. No, not from the Invoker, from the Sorrow. Very, very nice pickup from him. A good item. Just works well with. Oh, Snow is pushing up towards that uh, bottom tower. It does uh, get cycloned up. Oh, yeah, but she, she's about to get caught here. Is she going to go for the. BKB. Uh, he knows she's. The lion. Just that damage. Yeah, uh, there's so much damage coming through from the side of Ferocious 5 and um, that Sparks stood his ground and just uh, kept on slapping her. Yeah, really, with, with all the damage that he has, he if not, why not really? That Shadow Dance, I think, also helping him a lot to regain some of that life there. And now we see a 10k gold lead in favor of FFG on the Radiant side. Oh, Sora taking quite a bit of damage. BN5000 now trying to run in there. Oh, he charges on at the AA. Sunshine coming in, and that's going to get Fluffy Duck. BN5000 now in a bit of trouble. Moxie uh, doing as much as she can to actually get him down, and yes, she does get the kill. Nicely. Good plan. Spirit Breaker buys back. BN5000 came here to play Dota, and he's going to play some Dota. Gold's though getting the ATOS into the Earth Spike. And it's just, I can't imagine her walking out of this alive. But Jolsey is actually, oh, ho, ho. <laughs> she, she tried, she came so close. But yeah, she really, that firestorm just doing so much work right there. Yeah, I think uh, Moxie just tried to, to juke her way out of that one, but uh, she ran into open space. So not anywhere that she can actually go at the moment. Yeah, there, there were just no options for, for her at that point. She tried, but maybe going up north into the tree line would have been a bit better. But then again, there were four of them. There's not much you can do at that point. Now, there's a lot of disable uh, coming through from that Underlord, and that followed up by the stun of the Lion. Um, and then you've still got the Invoker coming in. He's got that Meatball as well as um, the, the Cyclone. Um, you know, he's got so many spells at his disposal, and it's very, very difficult to deal with that. It is incredibly difficult to him, and that difficulty is about a triple once he gets his hand on uh, his hand on the scythe of ice that he's busy building towards. 
Ooh, Slark with Ooh. a cheeky play. Yeah. And a, 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 a TP in here that's nice and aggressive. Although Slark starting the fight off early. There's Katrina on the Virtus Bird Gone. BN5000 going in on the Viper. Nether Strike as well into the Rodder 8 versus the Alice. Just, as you said, so much control coming out of them, right? No, I definitely think uh, that uh, Veneer is um, at that stage where they should be able to, to team fight and you know if it's done correctly with all those BKBs available they should be able to stream roll it. Ooh but uh, Snow you're getting gone on lo losing a lot of health forced to pop the BKB and the Eclipse and a good AAL coming out. Ma Lucius may be going to pop to this he's he's almost low enough no he's going to be fine but this BN BN5000 just charging all around the map and making sure that the aggression stays on, that they split up Veneer and don't give him a chance for that team fight of theirs to kick in. Yeah, I think what's what's happening at the, at the moment is that um, there's so much opportunity for Veneer uh, to actually go up for for straight push, but they, they prefer to, to get the carry a little bit more farmed up and that seems to be working against them at the moment. Yeah, uh, Cass, uh, uh, apologies, this Luna has been working on this Eagle song for about 5-10 minutes now. And the, con the killing is just keep... I think they, they need to give Snowy a lane for two minutes just to let her farm up. Jolt's blinking in with the slam and seemingly no fear on her, but an EMP would be be capable to dodge that mana drain there just in case she needs a split. No, they're trying to, to defend uh, this um, tower as best they can, but uh, BQN coming in, just turning around. Another charge coming in there from uh, the Spirit Breaker going up, fluffy duck. Oh, Sunstrike! Managing to completely delete Jolt, and it looks like they're going to turn on to Moxie and probably get them first. Well, that make that a definitely going to get it. Uh, and Snowy's coming in right now, and she's got the man, she's got this is a little too little too late. Yeah, I definitely feel that they should have stayed together a little bit more. Uh, you know, get those team fights up, take up full advantage of the damage auras that they bring to the game. And that potentially could have uh, turned the game around. It would definitely have been nice to see them uh, group together around the 25-30 minute mark. And just abuse those auras, as you say. Get the push going on and just keep it going. Because this VQN lineup, we didn't mention it earlier, but Deep push wise, they've got the Pit of Malice and the Firestorm, and that's all she wrote in that regard. So maybe they should have punished that a little bit more. Now, I do feel that, uh, especially with uh, the Brewmaster, we could have possibly seen a lot more, more uh, Primal Splits. Um, you know, Primal Split, charge in, uh, get the fight initiated, and, you know, go for the weaker players like uh, the Lion, and um, could have possibly gone for, you know, maybe the Provoker. Um, those are possibly the softest. The only thing that makes Invoker so hard is all the spells at, at his disposal. Yeah, and he's picked up the Scythe of Ice right now. Just what do you do against this Invoker? How do you how, how do you deal with this? He's got a Blink, blink Tag, a BKB, Scythe, Ags, and the Boots Travel as well. Going for the uh, uh, Octarine Core next. There, Veneer are running out of options. They're running out of them fast. Yeah, it's uh, very difficult now for the side of Veneer to actually come back in this game. I mean, um, Luna has finally finished up with that butterfly. Um, I don't think anyone has actually gone for the MKB as yet. Um, but the Basher from the Slark is definitely um, going to, to help a bit keep her in, this in spot so they can get that damage off. And uh, as we said, VQ in on the Slark. Picks up the Aegis once they finish Roshan. Lucius actually grabbed the cheese out of that one. And it looks like they want to go in and just GG this game right now. Yeah, it's, it's going to be hard for Veneer to actually defend this. Um, they can definitely see that there is a ward there. BQN just uh, getting rid of that, making sure that they don't have any vision on them. Doing so much damage right now. Jolt has just managed to complete up the Salt Kuros. She's also got two stacks of the dust. So maybe we see them turn it with another brilliant team fight and use that money. Oh no, but a smoke up from FF. Looks like they want to move in through the mid. Ooh, got another charge coming out. Ooh, BN just charging straight up, going on to Moxie. Creating a little bit of distraction, let the rest of the team slip in. Lucius with a very... 
nice tornado meatball. Misses on the EMP a little bit. VQ and giving oh. chase. No, he's, no, he's opening it up and just letting it go. Oh, Sunstrike misses. Not getting a kill out of that. But as this happens, oh, so is this all just a big diversion for the crew to get in? Oh, Katrina down on the bench. Spirit Moxie about no, no Moxie the four star save her brilliant play from her teammates Lucius taking a lot of damage from Snowy who's channel on that eclipse but the Sora putting a very quick stop to her running around with that yeah I do feel that uh, the primal spirit could have come a bit sooner oh Underlord's gonna go down BQN he's still got uh, the ages of immortal Lucius doesn't even care about that anymore he was hitting GG. the uh, and yeah, GG Ferocious 5 Gaming take game 1 with a 32-17 yeah. lead. Yeah, a 44 minute game, uh, definitely not bad, ladies versus uh, the guys. Um, very, very interesting game. I, I do like the pace that uh, this game was, was going at. But I just want to look at uh, the end game stats at the moment. Just have a look and see where things actually started going wrong. Um, let's just have a quick look at the graphs. As you can see here from just say the 12 minute mark, um, that's uh, things started falling apart um, for the side of the veneer. Yeah, at the 25 mark, we really just started to see things inching closer and closer to Ferocious 5's victory. And what I really want to zone in here on is Lucius's net worth, topping out the net worth chart at about 27,000 gold, followed by VQN. And the Snowy on a Luna just farmed very well, but couldn't keep up with that pace, couldn't keep up with that aggression. Oh, definitely. Um, just looking at uh, the quick scoreboard, you see that... Um... I think uh, VQN uh, um, played, played pretty decently, but uh, I think uh, this particular game I'll give to Sora. He did exceptionally well um, against the uh, uh, top lane, uh, did very well. That fire, uh, Firestorm and the Pit of Malice did so much damage to keep Luna um, you know, from farming at full potential. And uh, that was a, a pretty good pick for them on uh, the side of Furious 5. Yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to definitely agree with you on there. Sora did so much for his team. He dominated his lane single-handedly. Didn't need any TP rotations to help him out. And then in those team fights, in those ganks, that pit of malice, as you talked about, just on point every single time, catching these heroes and just stopping the retreat from happening. Yeah, definitely. But uh, that is the result of Game 1, Furious 5 Gaming versus Valhalla 2.0, Team Veneer. And we will be back shortly with Game number 2. So don't go anywhere, and we will see you guys shortly.
is the Radiant Fan. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and we are back again. This is Super Lightray, sponsored by Chaotic, and uh, joining me is Two Feet, Two Boots, and um, yeah, how was game number one? Ten seconds. I think he disappeared on me. Oh, that is sad. But uh, we'll seconds. carry on until uh, Two Feet, Two Boots comes back. Uh, looking at the current bands, Valhalla 2.0 Veneer versus Ferocious 5 Gaming, the Night Stalker and the Necro has currently been banned out, as well as a bit of a respect band for yes, the Brewmaster, the Ruster, and the Razor. Oh, I think I've managed to sort out those audio issues there. Oh, there we go. Ah, uh, there it is. Sorry about that. Uh, but yes, these bands coming out are quite interesting. It's fascinating for me that we see the Shadow Shaman and the Razor banned out in that first phase again by Ferocious just 5 Gaming. Yeah, they definitely want to get rid of uh, that uh, push potential as well as the team fight. But I do seconds. like the respect ban of the Brewmaster. Um, Jolt's played that year are pretty good. Um, and obviously, um, yeah. A couple of mistakes, but uh, I'm sure that uh, they'll be able to work on that. Yeah, there, there really is no higher compliment than to have the hero you played in the previous game first banned in game number two. That's just a sign that you did really well on that hero and that you caused headaches for them. Yeah, it's uh, definitely going to um, not hamper them as much, so that worries is out the way. But the Disruptor being picked up here by Ferocious5 and the Crystal Maiden. Uh, being picked up by the side of Veneer. Do you think that's a Juggernaut coming out? Oh, the Bane. Lovely hero, that one. Uh, uh, I hope that is a Juggernaut coming out, but I'm a bit worried about picking Crystal Maiden into a Static Storm from Disruptor, in that you can you can channel that that lovely Ice ulti all you want. The Static Storm tends to win that fight nine times out of ten. Seconds. Yeah, I definitely think that uh, Veneer definitely have to have a look at the positioning, uh, especially the Crystal Maiden. Um, if if uh, all goes well, you know, she might be able to, to pick up a Blink Dagger um, and get out of the way before that uh, Static Storm actually lands. That is the hope, but I want to point out the Marana has not yet been banned out, so if she manages to slip through the second phase, we could be looking at a Bane Marana combo. She'd work nicely with the Crystal Maiden in that regard as well. Yeah, look, that that's going to uh, take uh, quite a bit of communication uh, between uh, the Bane and uh, the Marana. But, oh, ho, ho, Tidehunter, straight up uh, counter pick there for the Bane. Oh, uh, yeah, the, the ferocious, ferocious Five seem to be going all into this team fight wombo combo. And I got to say, just with these two heroes already, it's looking scary. <laughs> Ravage is nothing to play around with in this game. The, the only combo that, that I can really think of that will really complement the Tidehunter and the Disruptor is actually a Darkseer. Especially with that vacuum, pulling them all together and um, that Static Storm is going to do a lot of hurt. Ah, uh, there's the Marana ban that I was kind of hoping would slip through. But I agree with you completely. I think a Darkseer would complement them very well. The only question would be where would he go because I'm assuming this is going to be an offlane Tidehunter. Um, I mean, you can have the, the docks here in Madaya, the bush position as bad. well. Um, use the iron shell to actually start stacking those bushes. Um, and I mean, within the first 10, uh, ten minutes, um, that would be your, your mana boots and, and part of your, your mech. Yeah, you could act you could definitely throw a dock. I haven't seen people throwing players into the jungle in ages, though. Ever since it got that heavy series nerf, it just doesn't seem to be worth it. Yeah, look at it, uh, obviously depends on, um, you know, once again, your your timing, it needs to be absolutely perfect. But now they've decided to go for the Bristleback, and, and that's quite a nice little tank there. That is a lovely hero for them to have running along in the front, front lines, which makes you think, maybe this isn't going to be a Juggernaut. Maybe we're going to see a Sniper coming out of Valhalla, or perhaps even the Drow. Um, I, I don't really see the sniper working that much, especially against the Tide Hunter. Um, he's way too tanky for that, and um, he's gonna try and avoid the sniper as much as possible. And especially with Ravage, um, once they actually get a hold of that sniper, is is gonna be easy pickings. 
What do you think of a silence uh, pick up in the mid lane for Team Vanier over there? Do you think it could work well with their draft? Uh, yes, most definitely. A, a silencer is always a very, very good pickup. Uh, once again, it comes down to to the timing. Um, they can uh, possibly avoid, you know, maybe the tide hunter blinking in, uh, which you most obviously will obviously pick up a blink dagger, um, you know, just to avoid that ravage going. Oh, 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 oh the magi! Oh, the magi! I haven't seen one of those in quite a while. Oh, that is such a beautiful tanky support right there. He does quite a lot of AOE damage, um, especially against those creeps in the early stages of the game. And, and that might just provide them uh, the, the um, you know, necessary uh, push potential they need. But the Tinker, nice little pick up there. A very nice pick up there. It's going to keep the lanes pushed. And if that Tinker gets ahead, if he gets the farm that he needs, he's going to cause utter chaos in those team fights. And Aghanim's laser is just going to disrupt Tide's blinking plans before they even start. Yeah, that Tinker is definitely, you know, it's a very, very irritating hero. Um, I personally don't like playing against him, but to face this Void. Oh, ho. Oh, that that is shaping up to be a very lovely wombo combo if you're if you're cheering for ferocious gaming tonight. And uh, I want to look at the bands quickly. Uh, Pudge, Phantom Lancer, and Shadow Fiend banned out by Vanilla. They oh they really don't like that Pudge. I believe this is the second game in a row that they've taken him out. Yeah, I do like the the, the Shadow Fiend ban out though. I mean that um, uh, static storm into uh, the ulti from the Shadow Fiend. I mean, that alone, I mean, does so much damage, and once you pop an Agnum Scepter onto it, I mean, uh, it's pretty much GG every single, every two minutes once Tidehunter is ready. Yeah, and look, just with those first two pickups, you, you don't want to give them any more AoE abilities, even though they managed to find a lot of control with Faces Void, and the Juggernaut ban out, and now the Luna, the Luna that caused so many problems with them last game. Yeah, look, the, the, the side of um, Vanier still need a, a hard carry. They they pass, they currently have the tank and uh, the split push potential. Um, they've got the ganking from the Crystal Maiden and the Bane. But now they need something that's going to be able to, to utterly just destroy the side of Ferocious. But they've come up with the Outwall Devourer, and, and that's pretty hard to counter. I think right now Vanier have to go for the silence, so... He's the only hero that can really deal with all of this magic-based fighting that Ferocious are going to throw at them. And you can run him as a carry. He's not the ideal hard carry, but at, at this point, maybe a Medusa. But other than that, I can't see any more solutions for them in the draft. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very difficult. I mean, uh, you mentioned the, the Medusa. Um, it, it, it could potentially be a very, very good pickup. Um, but I mean, you've got the Faces Void, he literally just jumps in, throws up the Chronosphere, you waste um, that uh, Stone Gaze. And I mean, I don't even see a Sven coming out here. I mean, that Death Hero will be absolutely useless, especially against uh, the Void and the Outwall Devourer. I mean, they've got yeah, no. so much stun and disable. Ooh, let's see what the slot ends up. Ooh, Assassin! Ooh, wow. that, that is a lineup that wants to kill things and carry on killing things. Oh, that is, um, wow. Um, look, Phantom Assassin's gonna have an extremely hard time in this game. Um, if Snowy can get that, that farm up, uh, ASAP, uh, possibly within maybe 20 minutes of the game, they still might have a chance. Um, but they're gonna have to keep down the Tidehunter. And I mean, Sorrow, who played the, the, the Underlord in the previous game, he did such a phenomenal job. Um, it's, it's a difficult game to call. Um, my my, my prediction, unfortunately, is in the favor of Ferocious Five. Uh, I'm gonna have to agree with you. Right now, Ferocious Five's draft just looks like they have much, much more synergy than Veneer. And I mean, Veneer's definitely got an idea in mind, which is run at you, kill you, and then take your tower. But I think Ferocious can withstand that, and and more importantly, they can they can respond with a beautiful counter initiation when they so choose. Most definitely. Um, just to introduce uh, the, the, the side quickly, on the Tinker, that will be played by Mokti. The Crystal Maiden, uh, that is going to be played by Kachubi. In a pain, will be played by Fluffy Duck. Bristleback is going to be played by Jolt. Finally, we have Assassin, and that is played by Snowy.
And up here on the Dire side, we have Eternal Penguin on the Disruptor, Lucius on the Outworld Devourer, the Sorrow on Tidehunter, uh, BN5000 on that Ogre Magi, and VQN on the Carry Faces Void. Yo, look, the, the, the Faces Void is, is going to be, you know, very, very detrimental in this game. Um, if that's the correct I'm using right now. Uh, those chronospheres are going to have to be battle. absolutely, absolutely perfect. They're going to have to catch Veneer um, as many as they can in that bubble. Hopefully not catch um, own teammates in there. Uh, and that's going to cause a lot of issues um, for Veneer. But I mean, they've got Jolty there. Um, Jolty's got the Stout Shield. Uh, got the Enchant Mango with the Tangos. So she would uh, definitely be able to, to last um, in that... Uh, no, yeah, she is definitely going to be able to withstand that lightning phase, as you say. But it just, as you've pointed out perfectly, it comes down to the void. Is he going to be able to land those chronos? Are we going to get to see the combo, the static, the tide hunter into the static storm into the faces void dream, or are Veneer going to be able to pick it apart? It's going to be very, very interesting to see um, how they actually to play this game out. Um, Wood here from, from both of the teams. They've got vision in the middle. Um, Moxie's gonna have to deny like a beast. Um, at the top lane, Jolt is taking so so much uh, um, harassment here from Pendleton. And I mean, that Thunderstrike actually has got a very short cooldown. It has an incredibly short cooldown. I want to point out the faces Void predicted this per perfectly. He's already got a magic Mercuria. So he's going to be perfectly fine up here against this disruptor, against this uh, bristleback. Sorry. Yeah, bristleback's going to have a, a, a very, very hard time. I mean, I can imagine uh, those consumables coming in um, constantly, uh, just to try keep her alive. Yeah, she's she's definitely going to feed in the region. I mean, as you said, that her ass is brilliant. And as you said, that BN5000 oh, comes and uh, hits her with the slow and just going to start tapping her with a 10 starting on the thanks to that ring of protection. There's just not much that Jolts can do against this and she has to leave the lane and run back. Yeah, um, Jolts at the mo moment is very, very um, mana dependent. Um, there's a lot of damage that VQN can actually soak up. Uh, he's got the time walk, so you know he will be able to, to get away. But uh, a rotation from BN5000, so much harassment coming in from Jolts. There's no mana available. That uh, Mango has actually been used um, at the mercy of BN5000 at the moment. Yeah, BN5000 just doing such a good job. And VQN is getting free farm and it's freeing up Eternal Penguin to get this, this get these pulls going and start getting his levels and his goal. Yeah, I, I think um, they, there's gonna the, the supports are actually going to suffer quite a bit. Um, because, look, they're going to constantly have to provide um, jolts with those consumables to stay in the lane much longer. Um, if it comes down to the fact that Jolts is actually going to have to purchase her own, um, it's definitely going to put her farm far, far behind. Uh, I, th I think at some point Jolts is just going to have to start buying her, 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 or at the very least try and leech enough the XP. But she's walked right into the middle of them, and that's another thunder strike. that's another slow, and oh, she's actually being sent back. Oh, mangoes are popped, she, she is in a world of hurt. Stick has already been popped, but she's got it up in three seconds. I think she's going to fall here, one more hit, ought to do it. There, no, she manages to pop the stick again. Oh, she, no, she's gone, VQ enjoying first blood there. Yeah, I definitely think they, they wanted to, to get that faces void to first blood. Um, I don't see that uh, BN5000 even tried hitting uh, Jolts. So, you know, very good uh, to, to the supports for allowing Void to actually get that kill. Yeah, that is actually very good. It's, it's always nice to see supports actually doing that, you know. Being aware of the fact that the carry needs this farm. They need that early start and making sure that they get it to him in every possible way. Ooh, yeah, I do see... Taking... I'm listening. Oh, go for it. She's just, just taking quite a bit of harass here from this <laughs> Tinker. He's down to uh, six tick charges and a tango and Moxie nice. is large and in charge in this lane in mid. Yeah, I do like uh, the fact that Moxie still has uh, most of the, the consumables. Um, she obviously just needs to unlock them. I mean, that uh, Iron Branch uh, still provides the, the necessary stats, uh, but won't be able to, to complete uh, the, the magic wand. 
Yeah, she sh she is probably going to be looking at uh, uncombining them into the magic stick. But uh, I think that'll probably be once she's... I don't think she has any plans of doing crazy now. But with the region rune top, uh, Lucius is going to get that one. No bottle, though. I mean, looking at uh, BN's passage, and um, even with uh, the, the spikes or the call spray coming from Jolt, she's not really taking that much damage. And it just shows you, you know, what tanky support um, that Ogre Magi actually is. Yeah, he's just such a monster in lane. And five HP regen, 10 armor. This he can stack up the quills all he wants. At this point, he's not going to get it. And we have a request for a pause coming out here. Uh, wonder what's going on there. Yeah, it seems that uh, Penguin has a bit of lag. Um, looking at uh, Sorrow at bot lane, has got uh, nine charges on the magic wand with that stout shield, and that is against Snowy, who's already got the Blightstone, so that is a definite desolator coming out, and it's going to help quite a lot, especially um, against that Tidehunter uh, to take away that, that armor. But um, OD is, is still going to be a major issue in this game, as well as um, that Faces Void. What worries me the most now that you mentioned Sorrow is that he's level 4 and Snowy is level 3. And Snowy had the benefit of a tri lane early on with Maiden and the Bane hanging around her heavily. So that has just not managed to fulfill its aim and a pull there, unfortunately for her. Yeah, the thing there that's um, obviously not working in their favor is that uh, Crystal Maiden um, obviously was a little bit too close and that uh, experience was shared. And, and I mean, it's expected for, for uh, the Titan to, to pick up the levels much, much quicker. Ah, I, I agreed actually. When you break it down like that, I, I would have liked to see a bit more harass on the Titan to, you know, nightmares into frostbites and just throwing daggers at the man constantly. But he's in a really good position now. And as we said, BQN manages to kill Flappy Duck, but Jolt gets a return kill onto Ogre. Lo a lot of action happening up there on that top lane. Yeah, uh, it was a very, very good kill there. Bane did try and, and do a bit of a sleep. Um, but, yeah, of course, he was still uh, taken down. Uh, Jolt, he just uh, went straight up onto BN5000 and, and got that kill um, quite easily. Oh, that is quite unfortunate to hear. But, I mean, it happens. That's Dodo. And Jolt's getting a little bit more aggressive here. She's got the Ring of Health ready and a Fairy Fire. Just waiting on Tinker to get uh, her items down there. And it's looking like this top lane might stabilize a little bit in Veneer's favor. Um, yeah, I mean, with uh, Fluffy Duck now moving out to, to help uh, Jolt at the top lane, um, especially with that uh, Brain Sap, it's getting their, their HP down quite quickly, and that's helping Jolt quite a bit. Oh, Jolt's just got a lot of pops off of that, but the Disruptor's back Ooh, here. So nice. Fluffy Duck managing to put the revenge kill with the Brain Sap. And she's, no, she was thinking about running back in, but not quite going to commit to it. Yeah, it was, um, they could have potentially, you know, maybe saved, um, the, um, Bristleback by, by sleep. Possibly could have even denied, uh, the, the Bristleback. But, um, I mean, yeah, they still managed to, to get, a, a revenge kill there. Yeah, getting that revenge kill was quite important. I, I I'd say an offlaner for... The position one carry is pretty much always worth it. Now, Jolty doing very, very well to actually help out Fluffy oh, Duck. Oh, sorry for popping out a solo Ravage down onto Snowy. He's going on to hit her with Anchor Smash once or twice, but it's copping a lot of tower hits. Ooh. Katrina getting a stun off Snowy, managing to find that last hit with the Phantom Strike. That Brilliant was a play good, good a play good there. rotation from Katrina. Yeah, I definitely like that play there. Katrina coming around. Um, there was no real vision there for, for Tidehunter to see anything and um, that um, definitely managed to, to get a nice convincing kill there. Yeah, you got to wonder why the Tide went in and just popped in that solo Ravage. Do you think he felt like it, it's high time for a kill now? I take this as just the PA here and she's around half health. Yeah, I think it's uh, more the, um, the, the confidence uh, that uh, Sorrow actually had. Um, he thought that he might have um, had enough. Um, he doesn't have the gush available, so there was no real slow. But uh, now they're going on him once again. Oh, and uh, yeah, they are yeah, definitely make that. I think he's going to be able to walk himself out of this one, especially with BN5000 coming up behind them.
Yeah, the Kraken Shell's just taking that stun off very quickly, and Katrina's now in quite a bit of trouble. She needs to run, and she needs to run fast. Oh, managing to just get under tower. Yeah, Soro is uh, tanking up uh, quite a bit of uh, damage there. He's got uh, the boots of speed. I see that he is uh, building up to that energy booster. So that is the mana boots uh, that he's wanting to get as soon as possible. And BN5000 just being a bit cheeky here with these illusions, sending him in to just look scary and try and take a little bit of a rest, but I don't think uh, of Venera falling for it at all. Uh, BN5000 just um, hiding in the bushes there, um, just uh, trying to get a sneaky little play off that's helped out onto quite a bit. Uh, but now in the mid lane, we just have a look here at uh, Tinker being punished. Uh, Moxie not doing too badly in, in the mid lane, but um, in, in terms of net worth, Lucius is um, at the I top. Yeah, Lucius leading a pack with 43 lost, it's 27 denies. More denies than Moxie lo has lost hits, in fact. And we see that in the level, it's two level discrepancy. And these banishers are actually just doing so much work. Ooh, the Vanguard has actually been completed there by, by, by Joel, so it's going to be very difficult for them to, to actually finish her off. Um, I mean, they're possibly going to go build into a Crimson Guard. Um, you, you'll still have the, the Blade Mail that's going to come out. Um, ooh. Yeah, Faith is a bit forced to just time-lapse all that damage off. He couldn't sit there in lane and ha after having taken all of that. Tidal into teeping into the mid lane, though. Moxie and Katrina going on. Lucius who just, just managed Ooh. to get that off and the Ravage to secure his retreat. Maybe even no, Katrina gets the stun off on him. I think he came back a little bit too early and they are going to get off scot free. A beautiful rotation in by Katrina. Fluffy Duck here as well, just to provide that last little bit of measure of safety. Brilliant plays from both of them. Yeah, that was a very, very good kill there by the uh, Crystal Maiden, Katrina. Um, you know, just uh, put balls to the wall. Uh, went straight up and uh, just popped down at that frostbite. Yeah, w and re a brilliant player, so close to that uh, OD being able to save himself with the banish. But running back in there is what sealed his fate. Katrina seeing it, just getting that very quick frostbite off and that last tick of damage. Brilliant players all around, really. Uh, Vika and might be in a bit of trouble now. Yeah, I was about to say, when we look up now, because of that early Vanguard, Joltz is sound as a pound up in this lane. She fears no man, woman, or creature from beyond time in space. Vikun actually taking a lot of damage. That's Lazar. The stick has now saved him. But Nasal Goo Charge is stacking up. Joltz wants to carry on going. And indeed, she is going to carry on, but Eternal Penguin is here. And BN5000. Oh, you have brought Wolf. Oh, 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 oh. The Disruptor Glimpse actually pulling Joltz out of that chronosphere oh and now she's going on to eternal penguin and he's probably going to die just from cool stacks here Ooh. nice little play there from jolts very good jolts getting a double kill thanks to the laser from moxie drawing vqn low enough really brilliant play there sensing that she's got the run that she's got the, the mana to do this oh that was a um a definite miscommunication there from um, on the side of um, Ferocious Gaming. I mean, that uh, glimpse was already sent on and then the, the Chronosphere went up and I think that was more a bit of a panic move. And yeah. um, unfortunately, it cost them two, two kills. I think a few angry pings are going to be coming their, their way around between those two. But it is just unfortunate. It happens every now and then when you're dealing with these clutch ultis. The one second really makes a difference. Yeah, it um, definitely um, cost him uh, two deaths, but uh, that was very, very well done. They've sent VQN down here against Noe and Sorrow's rotating in, but I think he was pinged out by Katrina as he walked past the ward there on the rune spot just down below with Radiant. So Snowy's backed up almost completely at the moment. Yeah, she's actually switched lanes. Yeah, Crystal Maiden, uh, Katrina, um, has already got that tranquil boots and I see that she's already building towards that big dagger uh, Got quite a bit of saving up to do um, on the tide hunter. He's got that mana boots um, He would obviously also want to try and get up to that um, Thing as well, but this could be a sad situation for them. Sorrow sitting on the sidelines He's got that ravage available and this could spell trouble for veneer 
It truly could. He's actually getting very close. Trina's bottom month though. Walks past. Pops this done. She says hello with a few right clicks. Are oh, they going to get him before he actually pops this? Oh, he's incredibly low. Trying to deny himself to Ancients. No, but Katrina manages to get another kill at the last second. And that that is that was not the play or the dream. I'm making uh, quite a bit of damage there, especially from that cool spray. And uh, gets slowed up. So, yep, he's going to try and get rid of Jolts. Uh, just using that Astral Imprisonment very, very quickly and just uh, moving back. What's good to actually see though is Snowy rotating back down to this bottom lane because, oh, and as you said, a little bit of action up in mid, uh, just harassing Lucius out of lane. But Moxie needs this lane. She needs another 1,200 gold before she's got those BTs online and becomes really scary. But as I say that, we've got a tight end who's TPing in and Faces Void's TP was just cancelled. So you gotta wonder what ha what happened over there. Oh no, they're... Katrina managed to cancel it, and they're busy going on her. Chrono has been committed. I over here, I can't see a way for her escaping this one. Yes, she has finally That took a while. And Ravage is up. It's on to Nightmare onto the face of Void. They're just trying to walk it out now. Moxie does not want to fight this. She is not ready. Snowy throwing. No, how busted. Let me up. Snowy has the uh, wall down and just ding ding down snowy has gonna fall a two for nothing trade in favor of fg i think that would uh definitely more of a of desperate play for for um uh, ffg and you know that that is exactly what they needed to to get back into this game um it did seem at one stage that uh Vanier actually had all of the control, but it's now being taken away and ripped away from them. Oh, Katrina popping a good ult and Fluffy Duck trying to survive, but they are just on the edge of it, so she does a full channel and that just lets Tata to see where you are. And he ping like, some aggressive pinging out from the face of Spoid. But I don't think they're gonna go out and Tata is just gonna cut push this tower down. No, oh, Katrina sitting in a, in a very, very bad spot. You've got BN5000 rotating into the bush. Going to go look for Katrina and finding her and her puppy as well. Yeah, and, and there's nothing she can do. As you said, she's completely stuck in here. Oh, the, the field misses. VQN runs in. Is this going to be the greatest duke of all time? Uh, no, it is not. And just as you said, very bad position. Nowhere to run, nowhere to go. Especially once that tower is down. No, she's only got uh, 500 gold at the moment, but there is a, a, a smoke up. Um, they're gonna rotate in. Ooh, and as that just after that happened, Lucius dove Moxie in the mid and gets that bit of the fiend grip out from Fluffy Duck onto Lucius. Getting cool spray and nasal, nasal goop stacks up at the moment. Jolts wants to stay here. She's got cool for another two seconds, and she really, yes, she man Fluffy actually manages to get the kill onto Lucius. But now Jolt needs to run away and Fluffy's being brought back in. Static Storm and the wall drop. That is a lot of damage onto the Bane and she drops. But the Quills managed to get the Tide Hunter. And it seems to be a two for two at the moment. Support from Mids and Support. Go down from Spots holding him in place. Jolt's looking around. through armor and a few at the re one, three for two trade. What did you think of that fight? That that was a very very nice fight there. I mean, Jolty just uh, stuck to it. Um, you know, got those cool sprays off, got the nasal goo. Um, you know, just trying to keep them um, in the damage um, area as much as possible, and it definitely paid off. Uh, um, very very nice play there. Good support coming through. And um, I think uh, Tyrant uh, never even had the ulti available yet, so not much uh, that he could have done. Oh, and that uh, Chrono popped out on Snowy. Snowy's taking a lot of damage, and yeah, Lucius will just tear through her with the Arcane Orb. Fate Void already with the Mask of Madness as well. Blur just can't save you from that much damage. Yeah, I'd see that uh, Tinker currently is like 150 gold. Uh, away from that boost of travel and that's gonna put even more pressure on the side of FFG It truly is they need they need to actually stop her from getting that but no She's got it in the stash already with the blink dagger queued up next So look look to moxie being all over this map and just putting a lot of pressure on the side of FFG 
as Ben 5000 finds a double damage and takes for himself. And you gotta wonder, with it having <laughs> just spawned, why not Lucius? Yeah, look, um, I, I do feel that um, Lucius um, is is going to, to be a, a massive hamper. I mean, that um, Hurricane Pike is almost, almost done. And uh, that's gonna do quite a bit of damage. That Hurricane Pike is going to be disgusting once it comes up. Jolt's been gone a little bit. The Gush minus armor coming through. I don't think Lucius wants to follow this through. I think he's had, he's had enough of a taste of those calls. And the Crimson Guard and the Blade Mail already up on Jolt, so she's brought back into the net. Pops Crimson Guard, pops Blade Mail, and yeah, Lucius, you really don't want to trade right clicks with that. So, a bit of, bit of posturing, the spells throwing back and forth. Both teams want to push this bottom tower. Hunter still has the Ravage available, oh, so... so he manages to get two crits off in the face of Spoidy, the tower hit, and goes down. Snowy managing to get a very nice kill up there on top while this is happening, Bot. Now they baiting Jolt as much as possible, getting her between the two towers. Um, that Ravage is still available. They're trying to bait them in as much as they can. Oh, ho, 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 but he gets sent back. Oh, Ravage is pop, pops on to two. That is the Bane and the Bristleback. And Sanity's Eclipse as well, getting Flappy Duck down very low. Jolt's as well. Ben 5000 almost down, but he's backing out. Jolt on a sliver of health. No, down to the gush. Tide Hunter with his blink dag already, and Katrina is going to be next. There is no way she get Oh, no, she. Moxie make, making the sacrificial trade. Wanting to go up. Oh, oh no. And not, not like this. Not like this I Lucius getting the <laughs> triple out of that so I do feel that uh, the Crystal Maiden could have popped that ulti much much sooner uh, but maybe standing in the tree line here um, that could have you know hit her uh, maybe a little bit better um, but she waited until you know the team was um, depleted was and then to only this. wanted to, to ulti um, so very very poorly timed that particular one Incredibly, maybe even on the trees opposite, just to give her a bit of cover. Because if you stand in the open like that, Lucius is going to see you and he's going to be through you with his arcane orbs. He could have even banished her just, just to really set it up. Yeah, it was um, poor decision making there from the, the, the Crystal Maiden. Uh, but I mean, um, you're not going to learn if you don't make mistakes. And um, definitely, it's a lot of potential coming from the side of Veneer. Also true, and let it be known, Veneer do actually have the lead, a 1k gold lead at the moment, despite being down 3 kills. Yeah, see, uh, even even this particular match and then uh, the the first match, uh, the kills pretty much stay the same. Uh, but you'll see, once we get to the 25 minute mark, the things are going to spiral out of control oh, again. and uh, they sent Jolt back because they're going on the Sorrow. And Moxie's just busy spamming out the uh, March Machines here. And Lucius now TP and Jolts is in a world of hurt. Needs to pop those. Man, just scale Lucius off for a little bit. Fluffy Duck getting a full channel. Fiend Scrub having an internal ping with, but with no one to follow up on it. And that is a girl a long way from home. Lucius banishing the Bristleback. And Jolts wants to go in, but now stunned for eternity at two times multicast. Lucas, Lucius on a mega kill streak. And faces void looking for the chrono. Oh, but a brilliant nightmare for BQ and season. I doubt they're gonna expand it at point. Oh, but they might. I actually didn't. There we go. There's the chrono pop. Dix is in a lot of trouble. Katrina as well. Snowy's down in the meantime, and Sorrow manages to pop the ra pop the ravage. That's on Fluffy Duck. Lucius with an ultra kill and a full team wipe in favor of FFG. Yeah, uh, that was a. Uh... Insane fight gone from one side to, to another. Um, FFG completely turned that one around. And once again, we're at the, the 22 25 minute mark. And this is uh, when FFG actually cracks up the pace. Yeah, as you said, this this is really where the acceleration needs to come up with. And with this Ogre Mad, mad Jump. A level three bloodlust that is most certainly not in uh, not a difficult thing to find as they take this tower with ease after that team wipe yeah this is uh, definitely thrown 2k uh, net worth um, lead towards the team of ffg and now it's literally can um, the side of veneer 
come back from this is this going to start snowballing or are we going to to have these ladies um come out and just give it everything that they've got and it's all going to come down to Moxie on this Tinker. Can she create enough space and keep these waves pushed so that uh, uh, FFG can't take advantage of these one fights and this good ward control that they've got out on the map? Yeah, look, at it's going to be very, very difficult uh, for Veneer to come back from this one. Um, the only tank that they really have at the moment is the Bristleback and... Uh, Jolt is starting to, to suffer right now. Uh, she's being singled out every single time. Um, now looking at the top lane, you've got the Tinker that um, is constantly being oh, harassed. Yeah, yeah that, that's a glimpse back and silence just outside the field, but Lucius doesn't care. He goes godlike. And you're right, really. What What is the plan going forward here? Bristleback's queued up a heart, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. Uh, they got some teepees and snowy's this desolator she's so close to a bkb and they want to make something happen they're feeling that pressure that desire um the, the only thing um that i feel is um yes snowy might have the right idea to to go for for the bkb however oh, v sorry to interrupt vq and just up a solo kill on the bane that shadow blade followed him for, followed her for about two seconds and got about three stuns before Bane could even pop off a single spell. Very nice play and very good bit of luck there. But, uh, sorry, continue. Um, I was saying with, with Snowy, yes, she might have the right idea to get that BKB, um, especially to, to try and counter um, that uh, Ravage. Um, you know, to you know not get stunned up and uh, disable so the rest of the team can jump on her. Um, however, I do feel that that Battle Fury uh, might even be a better idea right now. Just get that splash damage through, jump in, get um, the Tinker to, you know, get the laser through, make them miss their attacks. Um, you've got the Bane that's able to disable um, the OD. And they should be able to, to bring it back. Um, so, you know, it's all going to come down to the item choices um, that uh, Snowy also is going to come up with at the moment. Ooh, and we have a smoke out from FFG. They've drawn on the map. They want to go down through the river. They've managed to find Jolt. They're going to be able to hold her in place. They're going to be able to imprison her, but she's got health to work with. And there's the Ravage into the face's void ulti. That's a very dead crystal mate, but it only caught the one. Fluffy Duck under the Glimmer K manager will get out and get that onto the... Uh, get the Fiend Scrum on Sora, but the uh, Kraken Shot just takes that off. BQ has been taking a lot of damage. So now we really wanting to... There while Lucius plays clean up in the background. He's come He's come back into the play, and Mox is just on too low health to play. And Mo Lucius pops his own BKB, and uh, Tana to sleep, actually. They managed to take out the Phantom Assassin, and a beautiful double Sanity's Eclipse, leading to an Ultra again for Lucius. You know, this, this game is uh, pretty, pretty much over. Um, I don't really see Veneer coming back from this one. Um, the damage and the tankiness um, from the side of FFG is um, just, it's just too much. I mean, Veneer cannot um, contend with that. Yeah, right now they just have nothing to deal with Lucius. Moxie on Tinker is way too far behind. They need an answer, they need it right now. I don't know where they're going to find it. Um, yeah, they definitely seem that they would want to go for Roshan at the moment, just uh, warding up nicely there. Uh, there is an inverse wound available. Um, the only problem that, that I see right now is, once again, it comes down to the tankiness of uh, the side of FFG. You've got the Ogre Magi, uh, you've got the Tide Hunter, uh, you've got the, the Faces Void that's going to come in and, and stop you every single time. Lucius does an insane amount of damage, nice little spot coming there. Um, and I mean, even that, that Hurricane Pike, Oh, Oh, Fluffy managing to get that glimmer. Okay. Oh, just in the nick of time. Good thing, so lucky though, go. Desperation ulti, let it sleep to herself. Ogre though, just throws the stun. They don't even care. No, it seems uh, to me that uh, FFG actually want to finish this game. Um, they don't want to give uh, the side of uh, the ladies a, a, a chance to actually get back into the game. 
Yeah, I think the last game the ladies showed exactly what they'll do with a half a centimeter of a chance that you give them, which means you don't get there, you just shut them down straight. And you mentioned earlier this BKB coming out from the Phantom Assassin, it's flying up now. And I agree with you, I don't think this is the item choice. It's not the Tide Hunter you gotta worry about, it's the faceless void two steps behind him. And the BKB is not gonna help you with that. Yeah, I think um, there is a Nipton Cleave on the Phantom Assassin at the moment uh, that was uh, selected in the talent tree. <laughs> but I'd like to see, is she possibly going to go for 20% lifesteal? Or would she want to go for double um, stifling dagger? I've seen a few people pick up the double stifling dagger, but more more as a joke, the, the life still just works too well with this hero. And I think actually that she should consider picking up a Vlad's. It's, she's aiming for a butterfly right now, but with a 12k gold lead and no out of tower, only one out of tower, I think that's a bit ambitious. Yeah, I think the, the item choices are just a little bit too big at the moment. Um, I mean, with uh, the, the Tinker... Uh, ooh. Oh, Ravage Pop catches three, the Stomp Pro. Oh, and VQN catching three as well. Managed to get the dominating streak. Disruptor popping his ulti. There's Je there's Town throwing as much as she can at them. That's a top tower down and two kills. Although, it cost them two big ultis. No, things are looking very, very bad for Vanier at the moment. I mean, Snowy can't even jump into the fight. Um, yes, yeah, she's got the BKB. That Ashley imprisonment is still a danger, and that tower is going down like nothing. Yeah, tower's already completely down. Jolts and Snowy doing what they can. Jolts being that aggressive force on the on the front line, with the two vit boosters very close, about halfway to the Reaver. But where where's the rest of the survivability coming from what what i want to know here is who's buying the mech who's buying the drums who's buying these cheap value items just to help you stay alive a little longer you know the, uh, like i mentioned the only problem is, is the items that they want to go for it's, it's too expensive um you know do something small like you mentioned the drums or you know maybe try go for a, a four star now just to to you know help out try and avoid um, especially Jolt's actually being killed off. But I mean that disruptor is, is causing so much issue, issues, they can't really run away from that. They can't at all every time they try and disengage the disruptor with his glimpses back there. And, and we gave him a bit of stick for for that early glimpse out of the faceless void chrono. But ever since then, Eternal Penguin has been doing a brilliant job on these glimpses in the walls. Just controlling Veneer up nice and tightly. I think uh, Faces Void had some stern words and um, definitely bowing down to to the Void and um, doing very, very well there. Yeah, doing very good and we see an earn out on Eternal Penguin as well. Such a nice value item when you're going for these goals. Tidehunter's picked up the pipe. Void's now picked up the Shadow Blade. You got Ogre Magi with a four staff. OD almost with a full scythe of ice point because ultis are up and kills are going to be had. Oh, Je Fluffy Duck managing to escape barely there, but Katrina will not be so lucky. No, she will be so lucky, but that's a shadow amulet right here. There's, there's oh, and Sentry. She's oh, pop, pop. She, she is, she's just dead. She stands. It's that fact. The one thing that I do notice is that literally just standing on the top, throwing in those daggers, and you know, it's not really benefiting the team at all. Uh, she needs to get into those fights, she needs to get those kills. That's the thing. Oh, and we get a chrono popped out. Uh, Bane is gone, the Ravage has popped as well. Tatter walks back into the chrono a little bit. Snowy is not uh, unless she gets very lucky. RNG Jesus, help me out with a crit, and she manages to get one. Popping the Aegis then, running back out to safety. BQ in the back up, fine. The creep wave's still here, the Sora's still here, and Jolt's in a lot. No, she's not in a lot of trouble. She's a very tanky lady. And actually, FFG are busy being driven off. With that OD up the top lane, they just don't have the damage to go through this. And uh, I, I, I said that, but Gash is a wonderful thing with a, with a Mask of Madness as well. And they're continuing to push this pressure here on the mid lane while the OD slowly comes in through with a completed size of ice. 
Yeah, I think what um, the start of FFG is doing right now is they, they do more baiting on, on the Bristleback, uh, making us think that they, they're pushing a, a, uh, pushing them away. But then they just turn around and um, just hit it back in the face. Yeah, Katrina getting a beautiful ulti, but they're really just walking away and waiting for that channel to end. And Snowy wants to go in, wants to do things, but Raptors is controlling up and the, the hurricane pack Lucius just getting a double kill Lucius on a triple kill jolts the only surviving member up and now and oh the multicast that's about to end and ultra kill the third ultra kill for this game on Lucius that that's GG there's nothing they can do uh, it's a 20,000 net worth lead for the entire team and um, just a bit of um, Smack talk coming there from a Lucia saying that they have to buy back and uh, yeah, no one's committing to a buyback at all. Yeah, I think being that close to the rampage the three times in the game makes you just makes you want one. And with creeps down at the bottom lane, and that's bottom lane racks going down as well. Massive wave coming through on top lane that's gonna push itself out as well. This is Double racks pretty much guaranteed. Oh no, but they want to kill their Moxie. That's three hits. Tinker is just dead. Uh, so not much that uh, Vanilla can do here. Um, almost a trap on Fluffy Duck. Katrina though walking in. The Glimmer Cape a little late. Lucius picking up, up his T's 25 for two on this OD at 34 minutes in the game. Uh, look, uh, I can understand that uh, the side of Veneer, they, they don't want to give up. Um, you know, they continue to, to do their best and, and give it everything that they've got. Uh, but when it gets to a point uh, like this situation right here, um, you know, just turn the cheek, take the loss. Um, but they still want to fight it, so um, yeah, let's see um, what they can do with them. Um, this small little opportunity that they've got right now. Yeah, agreed. I must say, I'm always a big fan of the never say never say die movement in Dota. It ain't GG until that Just ancient is crumbling, and it's lovely to see the ladies really echoing that spirit, even while they're staring down a 28k gold lead that they carry on fighting, they carry on playing, and just trying to make it work with what they have. Now it's a very very difficult situation they're finding themselves in. Um, looking at um, the size, none of the team of um, FFG actually have uh, boots of travel or anything to that effect. Um, but the only problem is Tinker can't split boots anymore, which is way too late. I was about to say a big problem for those that Ravage is up, which means God, you Bristleback hexed up, Lucius opening up on him almost. Crystal getting a beautiful ultimate out. But Lucius don't care, Lucius got a BKB and the Sorrow hanging around here, he knows she's here. He's got a mech, he popped it during that fight. BQN now just sitting on towers, he's picked up a Manta in the meantime. And Katrina's got to sit here and pray they don't have sentry wards. Which the Disruptor does have, I wonder if he's going to place one just now. Yeah, that will, um, maybe they're just giving Katrina some false hope. Uh, thinking, yeah, I've got you guys, you can't see me, and then just that sneaky ward comes down. Ooh, but it actually gets popped in mid. Oh, wow. A little, a little bit of smack talk as well from Eternal Penguin. A wall coming out, a glimpse. Oh, oh, the glimpse back out. But a hex up follows up by Lucius. And BQN is godlike with that kill on Fluffy. That's all racks down. That's Megas. And they're wailing on T4s. This is GG. That's a good effort from the start of the near. And, um, yeah, they can only learn from the mistakes they made. Definitely get that communication up. Um, ward placements wasn't that bad at all. Um, yeah, not, not much that I can say. Ferocious 5 taking a 2 0 to victory. Yeah, Ferocious 5 playing beautifully and just showing us what good early aggression in the, in, in, after that first 10 to 20 minute gap can do for your game and for your team. But a brilliant game. There. Most definitely. I just want to have a bit of gloves. Um, this time around, uh, for about the 20 minute mark, um, things went horribly wrong for the side of Nier. Um, so, Verocious Gaming, you know, they've, they've set their time limit, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. If they obviously go towards the you know, 15 minute mark, get it up faster, they, they can do a lot more damage.
Yeah, but I, 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 looking at these graphs, I just feel sorry for Mox. At around the 25 minute mark, the Ogre Magi on Ferocious Gaming actually passed her in terms of net worth. She was just not getting the game that she wanted, not getting the farm that she needed to really have any impact. Yeah, it was just a, a, a very unfortunate one for, for the side of Veneer. They literally tried absolutely everything. Um, I mean, the, the items that uh, Snowy went for, I think, was more out of uh, desperation. Um, and, you know, she couldn't really get into those fights. It was just um, too much disable. Yeah, there was way too much disable. It, it's, it, it's as you said earlier, I think picking out the small, cheap little items that then build into the components has been a better choice for Nia than some of those um, very ambitious and very good-hearted uh, builds and expansion plans coming out. Definitely. Um, yeah, definitely Lucius uh, takes this one hands down. I mean, 28 for 2 uh, deaths, um, phenomenal, 25,000 net worth, that's more than double any of the players on the side of Veneer did, and there wasn't much that uh, they could do against him. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Lucius, definitely my shout out as MVP. But I also want to say VQN playing a brilliant void there. There was only, I think there was only one Chrono where you caught a teammate, and that's because the Tide Hunter walked back in. But they were all brilliant multi hero Chronos, getting them on point every single time. A brilliant game from him as well. Most definitely. And um, I think that uh, pretty much uh, wraps things up for us tonight. 2-0 uh, victory going to Ferocious 5 Gaming. Team Veneer, unfortunately, not able to, to contest. Uh, they definitely gave it everything they got. Um, they waited for the towers to fall. They didn't give up at all, so big ups to them. And um, we do hope that uh, we see more of them in the future. And for those uh, watching the or 